Hello, Pastor Deborah here again with another words of encouragement video for you. And the reason I'm doing this is because everybody needs words of encouragement. I see a lot out on social media, people trying to help people through words of encouragement, pictures, videos, words by other people. That would help them through trying times. Yeah. Well, I just had an event happen this week. I had a loss. A feral cat that had been with me and had been allowing me to pet it for maybe a year. It was several years old and it was, uh, I took care of it uh, at the vet. But I do have some of its children before I started doing this. Well, it got hit by a car. Somehow it made its way back to my yard. I found it in the morning. It couldn't walk, belly swollen, meowing. It allowed me to pet it. I dragged it onto a board. I dragged the board to our shed so we could go underneath the shed. And I prayed to the Lord, either take it quickly in death or heal it. Most feral cats don't live very long. They have a very rough life. And I had been telling this one in particular, stop going across the street to the woods. Because they get over there and they fight and then they dash across. They're not even looking. And a car hit it. Well, it passed away. Rigor mortis set in. And we are having to take care of its physical body treating it with dignity and respect. But the main point of this word of encouragement is that during the time I was waiting to know whether it lived or died, I covered my eyes so all I could see was darkness during the nighttime. And I went into my spirit and I had my spirit talk to my soul. My soul was hurting. This was an earthly creature one of pure flesh. It had a soul. It had emotions and life. But it was not an eternal creature. There are eternal cats. And I'll fill you in about that at the end of the story. So during the nighttime of waiting for either life to return, healing to happen, I made sure it had food and water. I prayed over it. I asked the Lord to take it quickly or heal it. It meowed at me one last time, and I said, I love you. And I went away. When an animal, a wild animal is hurt, it does not like to be around, doesn't want to be touched or cuddled. And this one, you, there was something wrong, seriously wrong in the inside. Probably eternal bleeding, crushed ribs, crushed kidneys, whatever. And the next morning, it was gone. But during the night, as I said, and the next night, I cover my eyes with a towel or something, draw into the spirit. And my spirit had to talk most of the night to my soul. My soul was wounded, felt the loss of a natural creature that emotions and bonds had been attached. I try to stay detached from them as much as I can, knowing that their lives are very short. There's other creatures in the woods that will kill them. They kill each other. They get hit by cars. Storms come, they drown. And I have to stay detached as much as I can. But to this one, I became attached just a little bit. And my soul was hurting. It was tearful and sad for the loss. So my spirit had to rise up, and my spirit had to talk to my soul and say, Soul, let's think on God. Let's think on his goodness and mercy. Let's rejoice in him, not at this loss. Let's rejoice that we are saved, that he is our God. Let's look to the Lord's presence. Let's look to his beauty and glory as a loving creator. That he answered our prayer. He took the animal quickly. What was the animal's name? I called it Puffball. It has long gray hair. Real small petite face. I just called him Diddy. 
He allowed me to rub his neck and be friendly. But I had to work with my soul. My soul was hurting. When you have a death of a loved one, an animal, a house, something in the natural world, our soul hurts and it needs comfort. So this word of encouragement is about how do you comfort your soul? Other people cannot do it. A lot of people will run out if they lose an animal and go get another animal because that soul wants to love, it wants to give love, and it wants to receive love. But I knew my spirit had to rule over this loss. So my spirit was telling my soul, soul, let's look to God. Soul, let's remember God's mercy and his comfort for you. Let's turn to his presence for your comfort. So I, my spirit was able to help my soul turn its thoughts, its feelings towards God and to get its comfort and its peace and to deal with the loss with him and through him. Mm -hmm. It was a long night. And the next day, as I said, rigor mortis had set in. It probably died that afternoon the other day. When I saw it lay down its head, gave me that one last meow, and it, God probably took it quickly, allowed it to go. Then I had to deal with the loss. It's over. And I had, I had memories of the cat. It's a beautiful cat. And I have to keep telling my soul, look to God. He is your comforter. When your soul aches at a loss of something you love, don't wallow in it. Don't turn to drugs or alcohol or sex. Don't turn to hate and anger. Don't live in that deep sadness. Turn your thoughts of your soul and your feelings to this God that loves you. And he will provide the comfort for the soul through the spirit, through the Holy Spirit, through the kingdom of God, through the word of God. During these times, your soul forgets that. A darkness comes on it. Hurt and anger and loss. And my spirit had to work and tell soul, we're not going to do that. We're going to look to God's presence and his joy. We're going to look to the cross. We're going to look at eternity. We're going to look to him to help us to get through this. I kept having to tell my soul, go to God. Go, let's look to God together, spirit and soul. We will remind ourselves of words of scripture that will help us. Then upon the death, during the day I was doing other things. The Lord came to me and said, because I had been a caring shepherd to this animal, even while it was dying, cared for it, dragged it to get it to safety so it could die, prayed over it, gave it food and water, tenderly loved it as it was sort of dying, and asked God to heal it or take it. The animals and the creatures of the Garden of Eden asked God to help me, to give me lions in the spirit, mighty ones, to be with me. As I go about and help other people, I know this precious cat, this gray fluffy thing, has a counterpart, the original, in the garden. And it came to me and said, thank you for your kind shepherding, your love of one of us out in the world. And we appreciate that. And we've asked the creator to give you more shepherding more abilities to increase your shepherding powers and to send you lions with you, which are cats, big cats, wherever you need to go, black panthers, tigers, mm -hmm. cougars, jaguars. Because when I go into the spiritual realm of the darkness, I am helping people doing battle against the animals 
that are in that world. So this word of encouragement, we all have losses in this earthly world. You could have a loss of your house, your car, your job, your health, a neighbor, your family. A lot of losses all over the world. Children, babies in the womb, parents, aunts, uncles, animals we love. And that sorrow can literally destroy you. It weighs heavy on you. Your soul has lost a connection. It can't get the love that it wants from that thing, that person. Can't give any love. Can't get any love. So your spirit must rise up. And it must tell yourself, your soul, we're going to look to the God of all comfort. The God that gives us all peace, that surpasses our understanding. The God that went to a cross for us so that we could have this relationship with him and he could comfort us with himself, his presence, if we would go to him. So the pattern is your spirit must tell your soul, we're going up to the high place. We're going into the presence of God. He will comfort you, soul. He will bring you peace and healing quickly. Everything Pastor Deborah goes through is used as a teaching story, a tool, a lesson to help you. So when you have a loss, go to the great comforter, the one who knows about loss, who lost all of humanity, who lost his rulership on the earth to another who lost us for so long and is losing us, doesn't have us to comfort him. And he found a way to comfort himself. He remembered his own words. So I have to go to him. So I want to bring you these words of encouragement. When your soul is hurting, you have a loss in your family, whatever kind of loss it is. Maybe you have a pet animal and it dies. It hurts. A bond, a tie to something that we love has been taken away and something that loves us back. But we love, our soul wants to love. And we do, we'll love the strangest thing. We'll love flowers. Mm -hmm. We'll love a profession. We'll love something that can't even love us back. We'll love our jobs. We'll love some of the strangest people. We'll just love ourselves, trying to satisfy in our soul a need for loving and to be loved. So my spirit had to go into overtime. And when I don't want to see that natural world anymore and go into the spirit, I have to help myself to do that. So my spirit can have free reign and it will speak to my soul all night long in the next day. It kept saying, soul, we're not going to do this. We're not going to let you sit in this sadness. Oh, I cried. There were tears of sadness, but you have to move on because God has to use this in me, at least, to help you because this is beyond the soul's comfort, beyond anything in nature and other humans can comfort. We seek a peace in our body. I have a tendency when I get like this, I don't eat. Other people eat. And we need to come back into balance. God gives me a little time, but he also looks to say, where do I turn to get my comfort? Whose shoulder do I go and cry on? Whose peace am I seeking? So my spirit had to do a lot of work inside of me. And tell my soul, we're going to go together. I'll help you. We are going to get comforted by the presence of God. So when a mask of heaviness and sorrow goes on your soul for the loss of something you loved, and you cannot take it off, oh, there might be a feather, but you can't lift your head up. The burden is too heavy, the weariness, the sadness, 
it upsets your biological body, your stomach, your heart. All you want is peace and some form of happiness. Help yourself. Let your spirit rise up as the king of this system. Help the spirit to help the soul, to take off the mask, the clothes of mourning and ashes for your loss. Tell the soul, we're not going to follow that road. We're not going to stay in that pit. We're not going to stay in that darkness. We're going to the light, up to the mountain, into the very presence of our comforter, the one we will meet upon our earthly death, the one that loved us so much, helped the soul to take off its mask, its face. The spirit must rise up. It can do it if you help it. God will help your spirit to bring words of encouragement to your soul. Pastor Deborah just went through that. It works. It takes a while because the pain, the loss is so tremendous to the soul. You get a spirit of heaviness on your soul. You're weighted down. You don't feel light and free. And life doesn't look good anymore. And if you allow that to continue, then the spirit itself will carry a spirit of heaviness. But there is hope. This is a word of encouragement to you. Turn your spirit and your soul to the presence of a loving heavenly father, to his words, to his memory. Look at him upon the cross. Look to him on the throne, knowing that he loves you and he will help you if you go to him. If you seek his words, if you seek his presence, his Holy Spirit is here on the earth, it will help you. And the mourning will be less. The sadness will lift the heavy burden of this loss will dissipate. And you will get on with living and helping others as you have been helped, just like Pastor Deborah has. So be encouraged. There is hope. Yeah. This new Zoom studio is a little different for me. I'm trying to figure out how to do all my green screens and all the technology stuff. But for right now, we're just using my virtual backgrounds. I've got some other ones. So hopefully each time I do one, you'll get a new virtual background. And God will use my life to help you. So be encouraged. There is a presence that surpasses all your losses and your griefs and will help you through them. If you will take his hand and let his hand take your soul and he will walk with you through them. He will shorten the time. He will give you words of hope and you will feel much better. So enjoy these words of encouragement from Pastor Deborah in the Zoom studio of Agape Love. Love is here, ministries. I'll see you again on the next video of words of encouragement. Bye.